Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Cesarino back here for our first Traders Feedback Show here for Traders Season 2, episode number four. And I'm back here in the turret with Mr. Traders. It's Puyo Zavi Kili. Puyo, how are you? I'm doing great, Rob. I'm pumped. Traders officially becomes even more legitimate with a feedback show. I'm so excited. We've now had uh, well, four days or so to marinate on the episode, marinate on the season, and I can't wait to dive into some of these questions. Okay. Um, we got a lot of feedback questions. I was actually overwhelmed with the response uh, that we had, uh, what, like 70 some odd uh, traders questions come in today. So we're going to do uh, some of your feedback questions and talk about some of our favorite social media moments of the week as well here from the traders. And that's the thing that I love about the traders is that it's very messy. Puya. It is. It is. And it seems like the drama don't stop in the castle. Uh, no, it's good because, you know, um, like Survivor, like, well, hold on i should say uh like for the, like the the actual right, like regular season of survivor typically is not that messy these days like it's very pretty cut and dry we we everybody gets along that's good traders is giving like off season big brother yeah i mean you know this could be some kind of a slop we're doing here is like yeah, a hybrid a sloppy. yeah yeah and i and i feel like it's interesting to me because their season's still ongoing, and unlike Survivor, there doesn't seem to be any kind of embargo here. People just be saying whatever they want about the show <laughs> that they were on. Yeah, okay. So we are going to be covering all of that. And then, uh, of course, if you want to send in traders' feedback questions for next week, go to robswebsitecom slash traders feedback for that. But yeah, you and myself, Nick Ayadanza and Sasha Joseph had a really fun podcast on Sunday where Nick came out and said, hey, I need to explain why all you Survivor and Big Brother fans should care about these Real Housewives. And he did just that. Yeah, uh, it was an eye-opening experience learning more about these housewives and with Sasha there as well, the Bravo celebrity and MJ, and kind of re learning what do they do, what have they done, what do we need to know, and how does this impact them in the castle? Yeah, Great. okay. So uh, that was very fun. Check that out in our podcast feed, robiswebsite.com slash subscribe. All right. Puyo, uh, so a lot of stuff. I went back and watched the episode again. Uh, super fun. Uh, mm. Did you have any thoughts uh, about episode four that have evolved since we spoke on Thursday night? Not really. I feel like for the most part, I still maintain the same thoughts I did before. I may have a different thought on who might be getting murdered, maybe. I um, but otherwise, I feel like, again, I feel like they nailed the cliffhanger because not only do we not know how these three are going to get along, but also who's going to get murdered and what does the next round look like? Well, give us your updated thought of the murder. So I feel like I initially left the the fee the show last week uh thinking about you know they're probably going to shoot someone from the quote others side of things not a bravo person not a gamer person and i thought maybe they go with a pilot pete to like pin it on kevin but the more i thought about it the more i think we come to a place where i could see it being more of a someone who's not really in the gamers but is a gamer maybe like a trishel i could see getting murdered i think so Part of me also could see a Janelle murder, Rob. I'm not ruling that out either. You know, I, I was like on my rewatch. I think the thing that did stand out to me is just like CT and by proxy Trishel really like in the middle of things. And I'm just starting to feel like that. OK, you have Bravo there like uh, in their faction. If this was like in WWE mm -hmm. terms. Um, so you have their faction and I almost feel like that they're looking at, okay, well it's, you know, the Parvati and Janelle are sort of like leading the gamers, but I kind of feel like that with Johnny bananas out, like do the two remaining challenge people that are two people who know how to play games, but aren't necessarily like in the sides, like could they sort of like Trishel and CT, do they have sort of like 
Tika three upside of like, could we see like uh, Bravo warring with CBS reality TV? And then the couple of challenge people being under the radar. I mean, this is, and I think this is a question we got a lot in the feedback form. And I think it's a, a lot of people's minds going into episode five is after seeing what really felt like alliances and factions being put out in front of us for episode four, is this going to continue? Are we going to continue just having these little groups of pockets of numbers just demolishing each other? I don't think we have date, enough data to really pinpoint that. I still think that it was a one-timer where they were like, Larsa's talking a lot, she's commanding a lot, and we need to get someone out from that side. Let's get together and do this the one time. I don't think it continues. That being said, I do think that CT and Trishel have each other firmly, and I do think that if other people start forming suspicions or anything, I could see these two still navigating the waters together, no matter who they're getting closer to. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's jump into some of our questions because we got a lot. Let's see how many we can get to here tonight. Mara has a question okay. and she wants to know from you. This is a gameplay question. Are we seeing an evolution in the game where it's less about finding a trader and more about alliance versus alliance? And I think this is a, a good place to start here where we have these three factions that were talked about. Yeah, I wouldn't call it an evolution in the game. Again, I feel like if this continues happening, episode five, episode six, then it's a conversation to be had. But I think the nature of the show, The Traders, dissuades you from doing this because there's no benefit to picking numbers down like that unless you with absolute certainty know who the traders are. If you do, and they're on the side that you're working with. Because if you don't know who the traders are, this is a waste of your time. Because you want to get, if you're getting to the end game, the objective is at the final ceremony, fire ceremony, you want to be standing there with all faithful, if you're a faithful, in order to win any of that prize pot. And you're not going to get, it doesn't matter whether you finish 16th or 6th, ultimately, unless you know who the traders are. So I really don't think this is the way the game's going to go. But that being said, I feel like if this does end up being a trend, we got to mentally prepare to see a different show with the Traders US if they continue casting reality TV celebs and not just civilians, because then it does become who do I know versus who do I not know? Yeah, it's super interesting. Like I was just, uh, thinking about this in terms of like, OK, if you are in the reality faction and you're sort of like going back and like giving all of the information that you get back to it, it's like. Does it even matter if there's a trader in your group? Like, okay, maybe you won't win, but will the traders ever kill you? Like, will I mean, it, it's sort of like if you're sort of like uh, keeping your numbers and then preventing the banishment, you know, worst case scenario, I guess, is uh, that if the traders are in your group, they're not going to take you out because you're you're not suspecting them. And then if the traders are on the other side, okay, then maybe they get you if they're not in your alliance. I feel like the traders will always have the upper hand because they have obviously the key to murdering and they're safe for the murders. So for example, if we were to run a scenario, um, let's say of the trader, let's use Dan and Janelle as an example. Let's say that Janelle is on to Dan. And I'm sure this is a question that we'll tackle more deeply. Let's pretend Janelle is on to Dan and let's pretend that Dan is keeping Janelle safe because, you know, this is someone I can trust. I think if you are a traitor and you're getting buttered up or someone's not questioning you, I think you you feel that moving forward. I think you get past like round table number five and you're like, you know what? I feel like at this point, Janelle should have probably sussed me a little bit. It's weird that she didn't. I might have to murder her. And I mm -hmm. think that you can deploy the parachute, so to speak. This is a number that's in your corner, but also this is someone that you seem to be very tight with. So no one's going to think that you did it. Yeah. And that's kind of the way I see it. I feel like it's a, still a tough tightrope to walk. I don't think just because you figure them out, that's safe. You still have to, I think, put some suspicions on them and, you know, buddying up close yep. enough, too close might be a problem. And I don't think we, that we, 
this was a completely new phenomenon from last season because we had like Suri and Stephanie and Rachel, like they were all like in cahoots working together. They just was not really a rival faction for them to be going up against. Yeah, because I mean, in the middle of the three of them working together, Suri also started befriending and working with some of the regular right. people. Right. Yeah. Um, and there was like, uh, you know, Brandy and Kate like had like the beginnings of a faction. But then, you know, uh, Brandy got taken out early and then Kate was sort of like solo going after Rachel. Yeah. And I feel like when you look at it this way, if you are a trader and you have someone that's very close with you and you start making connections with others and you're like, hmm, this person I don't think will ever be on to me, then you'll keep that person inside. You'll jump ship immediately. Um, it just really comes down to how many people are looking at you otherwise, because if there's 10 people left and eight of them are not looking at you, then it don't matter who your closest people are, who you might have connections with. It's who can who's who are you going to fool at the final four? OK, Puya. so you talked about whether U.S. traders decides to continue with the reality casting or goes the other way. This was an article uh, that got a lot of traction oh, uh, this week on social media. Uh, Vulture.com had an article that was called The Traders Needs Normies. And there was uh, basically uh, talking about how that the all reality star cast is not helping. It was better in season one. Bring back the normies. I feel like this was a rather unpopular based on the, the, what I saw. Uh, what was your reaction to this? I feel similarly, Rob, because if the argument is season one's cast was better and we need normies like that, uh, you can keep them. I think my life is fine. I have always long maintained with the traders in the U.S., it should be all civ, all, yeah. all normies or non-normies. Do not mix and match because I don't think that's a good recipe. And I feel like, and I've, and I've talked about this because of the fact that we have so many franchises going on at the same time. I'm very chuffed that we have a kind of like a Royal Rumble style traders with the US where you don't know what franchise they're going to pick people from. And it's kind of like an Olympics where you've got people from their different like fields coming in to compete. I'm not yeah. mad at this at all. Yeah, I don't think we we need the normies. And I think that we kind of like have like a couple of people like that are just there. there. Like your normies are like Ekin Sue and Pilot Pete and uh, John, the, you know, a uh, British politician. Mm. Uh, just like uh, we just got like a bunch of like rando famous people. And I feel like to you that know, didn't some... have a big quote. Yeah, and I feel like to some, like, Normie is, is to me, a Normie's a different person than to someone who's, like, a huge Bravo fan and doesn't really know the CBS people, you know, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. so I feel like there's always going to be someone, one or two people, three people that you're not really going to know you're going to get introduced to yeah. in the middle of all this or who might be a little bit over their head. You know what we really need this season? Where's Andy and Quentin? Said That's, nobody ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, except for the author of this Vulture article <laughs> that really was, like... You know, there's a, there's a Quinton shaped hole in my heart, and Maybe I need a buzz it. Buzzkill. Yeah. I, yeah. I, the four Is episodes. Is this Quinton's burner account? If Quinton has a burner journalist account, mm -hmm. I would be very surprised. <laughs> Is Nicholas Qua, the author of this article, uh, Quinton's burner? Both start with a Q. We might need someone to investigate it. Mm hmm. No. Uh, I'm sure I uh, no doubt. Uh, Nicholas is a uh, uh, revered journalist. Yes, just might probably not talk about this take ever again, is mm -hmm. my guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, that being said, um, let's see. Uh, where do we want to go next? Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the infighting among the traders. Okay. Uh, Trevor Chong wants to know, call your shot. Who's going to be the last trader standing? Uh, who's going to be the first to be banished? Okay. Do you want to go first? And do you want to talk about first banished first? First banished first. I think, and this is tough, but I think it will be poverty. Okay. Okay. I don't necessarily disagree i think it could be parvati 
However, I still also maintain that it could be Dan. I'm not yeah. fully sold that it's not Dan either. See, I just I know Dan that it's not the Phaedra. Most insulated as of right now, because I think that. So here's my my logic for part, mm -hmm. and I, I I certainly am not rooting for this to happen. But my logic for why I think it could be Parvati is that based off of the podcast that we did with Nick, I have a different understanding of Phaedra and her uh, and how how she works. And I feel like that Phaedra would not be above, hey, we need to banish Parvati. I think Parvati is a traitor. Goes back to Bravo with this information tells them that and then at the next banishment ceremony that bravo is leading the charge against parvati right but how many people are in the bravo party rob you've got okay there's four but if they're all saying like hey we're all voting parvati tonight are people going to you know like uh the, the, people won't jump on board with that mj i mean mj is five all right, and Jay makes five. Gone. Lars is gone. It's only four. So yeah, it's four anyway. So that's the thing. That's the question to me. That's why it's such an interesting place they've left this cliffhanger. Because in that traitor's turret, they're having a lot of, you know, there's a lot of beef going on. The question is, how does the beef translate into the next day? Because in order for Phaedra to get Parvati ousted, Phaedra needs to put herself out there. And as of right now, I feel like Phaedra's been playing a pretty low-key game. I don't know if Phaedra's going to be willing to do that, but also, if I've ever learned about anything from Phaedra, I think she's a little scorched earth type person, so she mm -hmm. might very much go that way, but I need, what I need to know, what I need to learn, is we have got no inclination out of anything except for Phaedra coming into the shirt saying, no one likes you, they all think you're a traitor. If this is true, then I 100% co-sign with you that Parv could be not long for this game. But we don't know if that's true. That could just be gaslighty, lie, lie, deny type things. So I'm curious where it goes. Yeah, I think the thing that is uh, against that case is that even if Phaedra went back and said, okay, Parvati is the traitor. Hmm. Now these like swing votes that they would need are sort of like, the Kevins and Peters and Bergies. And we saw, was it like Tamara talking to Kevin and saying like, I don't, you know, I don't like you. Um, it like, I, I don't feel like those guys are going to get swayed by Bravo. Right. I, I, and that's the thing is I'm very curious because you think about Kevin having the beef with Tamara, Tamara, not really messing with, uh, with Kevin MJ having the beef with him. I don't think they can get him. I think Sandra has Bergie in her pocket. And I think Sandra, right, as of right now, is at the very least working with Parv from what I'm seeing. So I think it'll be more tough. But also, the question didn't say immediately next episode. So I still think your, your judgment is not invalid whatsoever. I think we're both on the same page that Phaedra is not going to be the first one gone of the, of the three. Yeah, Phaedra, I think, is the second most likely because then I feel like, okay, well, if Dan and Parvati are now going to like, and we don't know how Parvati is going to take this confrontation with Phaedra. If a Parvati comes out of that and says, Dan, I'm done with her, let's, mm. let's effing go. And then they put a plan into motion to get Phaedra banished. They do have the numbers with the gamers that they could take her out. True, but then the, again, the question for me is how tight is this alliance stuff? Because I don't, I'm not willing to say it is tight, tight after just the one episode we've had. And obviously, I could be very delusional because I do think there's clearly enough links where they're like, we don't want CT gone. All right, we're not doing that. Let's just get rid of Larsa. And they all jumped on it and got it done. Now, the question is if Dan walks in and says, Phaedra, are they going to do it? If Parv walks in and says, Phaedra, are they going to do it? Because I think the Larsa cell was a lot easier because Larsa was making a lot of waves. I don't necessarily think Phaedra has been making enough waves. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And Dan, tough. I feel like, is solidified his uh, position. I think he stabilized after kind of uh, a shaky first week by the end of like episode three. I, I think Dan is pretty good. I'm not seeing where the danger is coming from right now for Dan. I think Dan still has some worry because I still think the they can revisit the conversation about um, the whole men situation of like all these men have been going out. 
but also that he's been quiet. I think obviously he's been a little bit more vocal in episode four, and I definitely commend him for that. But I still think there's a world where that can catch up to him. Additionally, the idea that how is Dan surviving this far? Because, you know, we talk about these alliances. I think inevitably someone on the gamer is going to say, hmm, I don't know if we can let Dan just get to the end. Okay. It's possible. All right. Chad Moon wants to know, when's the best time for the traders to 100% turn on their fellow traders? Uh, Sari did what was needed for her game. Not if you ask Ari, but I <laughs> think that you would really risk exposing yourself if you were actively trying to get a fellow trader banished. Now, last season, Cody kind of made an unforced error that got everybody looking at him and then Sari and Christian kind of cut bait on him. It wasn't that they actively turned on him um it was just basically they did not fight for him is there a best time to 100 turn i think it's a fascinating question because we've seen traders uh go against each other as early in some of these franchises maybe like episode two or three so some people will go a little too soon uh some people will go a little too late but i feel like the sweet spot is really the for me if you hear another trader throwing your name out or it gets back to you that they've been talking, plot and get rid of. Because at that point, you can't trust them. Also, once the suit is broken, so if there's three traders and two of them go against each other and one goes and you're the third one, it's broken, baby. Get rid of the other one if you have to. Like, do what you got to do to get there. Because at the end of the day, when they get closer to the end of the game, when they get closer to like a final five, final four, Ideally, you want two traders there so you can get rid of one last one at the end so that you can be like, all right, well, we got them all. Let's just say we're safe now, uh, which is where Ari goes out by the on the hands of Sari, right? So I think you need to have two. But again, if a trader is causing you harm or problems, get rid. But otherwise, do not do it unless you absolutely have to. I really don't think you want to start being the face of that uh, movement. Okay, D Jr. says, if Phaedra gets banished, who should Dan and Parvati recruit as her replacement? Should they recruit one of the Bravo people or should they recruit someone to help take out the Bravo side? This is interesting. I don't think the Bravo people hold that much threat um, in the event that Phaedra goes. I think if I'm them, I want to continue throwing people, uh, getting people that we can just scapegoat out. Because from what I've seen, or at least the, what the show is telling us, is that Dan and Parv are looking to work with each other for the at least the next bit, I think you you do not recruit someone who has the capital to get rid of people, namely yourself, if they feel motivated. So do not recruit Sandra. I don't care how close you are. Sandra, I think, has been building an army silently and I think could get you when she wants to. I think Sandra is uh, doing a nice job here. She, because I think the game of traders as a faithful is built for the mentality of anybody but me. And I think Sandra is the queen of anybody about me, but mm -hmm. also has been silently. She's got this thing with CT. She's got Bergy in her back pocket. And obviously she has like the rest of the gamers that she's affiliated with. And she was working on the housewives. Sandra's like very well situated. And if you recruit her, I think that's your, your doom. So don't do that. I think maybe get someone in an other spot that you can always just get voted out before you. So I'm ask suspicions on them. Okay. So uh, who would that be? Right now? Um, yeah. Oh, you also want a dummy who can't really move, make movements. Get Kevin on. Get Bling Empire on, on the phone. Get Throw him in the turret. He'll be overwhelmed. I think he'll goof. I don't think he has the capital to really oust you, so you'll be fine. But are you worried that he could be somebody who slips up and then uh, gives information away? Um, No, I think he... Because they can't... They have their, like, under the game rules. You can't say... So you're a trader or that anybody else is like you can't oust the traders by saying listen screw the game we're traders um however to me i feel like kevin is good for a couple of reasons for dan right now there is one male trader and as much as i don't think they should ever try and do metagame i think a lot of people will be playing the game looking at metagame and i think for dan it's perfect to have a male trader to throw out and I think Kevin right now could be an easy sell to get booted immediately. Okay. 
for you. Let's take a question from Andrew. Uh, Andrew mm -hmm. says, I'm not familiar with the international versions of the traders, but in any of those iterations, have the faithfuls won for this current U.S. season? Which faithful is playing the best winning game so far? Okay, so I think who's playing the best winning game right now? I'm saying Sandra, and I'm and I'm holding that strong. I mm -hmm. really feel like she's playing a very strong faithful game. As far as have faithfuls won, yes. Um, I believe we talked about this on the UK pod, and Annabelle had the exact number, but it's something like a two to one ratio faithful to trader. So for every two trader wins, you've had a faithful win. Okay. Yeah. So the deck is stacked. I mean, the titular traders, yeah, they definitely have the upper hand because ultimately the traders just need one of them to get to the end and they win. You cannot win as a faithful if you're in the final three with a trader, final four with a trader. You have to get rid of all of them. So it's a lot harder of a task to do if you get it wrong. Okay. All right. Um, Lee has a question about the the faithfuls voting. Um Lee says, I've noticed the faithful will often not vote with the group, uh, but traders almost always vote the right way, understandably, to blend in. Knowing random votes tend to be done uh, by only faithfuls, should traders do this too to throw off the pattern? The way this game works, given that you don't have, you know, a clue wall a la claim to fame, you don't have sabotages, there's no extra role that can give you anything. You're going off of anything you can build up on. And I think your worst nightmare as a trader is you throw a rogue vote to burn and then someone's like, okay, but we all voted for this person. Why did you not vote for that person? Mm -hmm. That seems weird. And depending on how you answer and they're, if they're looking for confirmation bias, they'll just be like, ah, no, you seem defensive. I'm going to get rid of you. You don't want that. Whereas if you're hiding in a block of eight and someone singles you out, you can be like, what about this person, this person, this person? And yeah. that's a little bit easier to palette. What about throwing a vote on another trader? That's fun. But if you do that, you have to talk to them in the turret. Rob. Yeah. And unless you, I mean, you sort of work it out. Yeah. Yeah. If you talk about it ahead of time, I actually like that. I think that'll be a fun move. But how often is one trader going to be like, you know what? Yeah, put a vote on me. We watch Survivor where someone's like, you're the burn vote. They're going to put one vote on you. It don't matter. And people are like, absolutely not. I'm not letting that happen. So I don't think with all this on at stake, they're going to let that happen. But I'd be I'd be into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, just throw people off a little bit. <laughs> okay. So of the three traders, who do you think is most likely to be willing to be a hinky vote? As in they receive the hinky vote. I think trader. that parvati could deal with it the best i think so too i think she has more finesse um, especially if it was it. somebody that she trusted mm -hmm. like a, like what if dan did it if uh if dan if her and dan worked it out i think she could handle that it got done to her mm -hmm. yeah I better think so. than better than dan or phaedra yeah okay um all right how about uh a voicemail a voicemail from Paolo from Edmonton. You ready for Do this? It. All right, here we go. Here's the voicemail from Paolo. Hey, Rob. Hey, Puya. This is Paolo calling from Edmonton. So there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not Janelle knows that Dan is a traitor, but she's just not revealing it because she's keeping her cards close to her chest. What do you think of this? Does Sandra secretly know that Parvati is a traitor. Let me know. Thanks. Is this possible? Yes, it's possible. Of course. I mean, the, the, you're talking about two people who have not only come from the same franchise, but they've actually played these games together. Mm -hmm. So they could potentially have a better read on each other than most people. Or you could also metagame logic it that, Listen, there's two of us from Big Brother. I'm not a traitor. Probably Dan's one of them and vice versa with Survivor. So you definitely could have an idea that you think it's that person. However, and and I and this is one thing, that, Rob, that I'm not loving is that, like we said earlier, for some reason, these embargo, there's no embargo on NBC. So they just say whatever they want. And some of these people that were just asked about potentially may have said, yeah, I knew all along. And I'm not going to subscribe to it because. You can say anything you want on the show. I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting for the episodes, not for mm -hmm. the podcast. Um, other than our own, of course. Yeah. Uh, that being said, 
I think it's entirely possible. And of the two pairings, I would probably say that I think Janelle would be more likely to know than Sandra would. Not saying that Sandra wouldn't recognize it or anything, but I already think Sandra's working a different game. Sandra's anybody but me and getting people in the pocket. And ultimately, if the season ends and it's like, well, they both knew all along and that's why they rode a gamer alliance to the end because they knew the two, then kudos. You broke the game. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. How common is it, though, in your experience with the traders where there are players that like, oh, I knew all along this person was a trader, but I didn't say anything. And, and also, we don't get it in the show. Do you hear that a lot after the fact? I feel like, you know, sometimes people are heroes of their own narrative and they'll definitely throw that out oh, there. Um, for sure. Yeah. But I feel like more often than not, once someone figures out that they know someone, they'll say it. More often than not, again, you got to remember, we are on the second season for most of these shows. None of them have had more than two. So the game is still evolving and a lot of people are still learning on the fly. But I genuinely feel like it's so risky to not vocalize the stuff like that to the confessional room, especially because you could get murdered at any point. So your days are a number. You're not guaranteed a ride to the end to be like, ha ha, I knew all along. And these are reality TV people. I Some people will want that credit. The question is, is the editing not giving it to us? But if they if they know they're talking about it, they're just not being shown. Okay. Puya, let's talk a little bit um, from social media. Okay? Because that's where cool. a lot of this uh, traders action is coming. <laughs> Michael Horn wrote in a question. Hey, Rob and Puya, I was wondering... What you both think about bananas continuously going after Dan and Phaedra, but mostly Dan's decision to murder him first. Mm -hmm. While he's clearly still bitter about it, does he actually have a valid point in saying that Dan should have kept him around to use as a shield? I do think regardless of uh, bananas would have likely been an early consensus roundtable vote. I think with the traders, Rob, more often than not, for that first murder, it's kind of a statement murder because it's the beginning of the game. There's not a lot to go off of. And I think for the reality TV people, I think they wanted to make a big statement. I think for Dan also, he is explained in the Traders Postmortem. He has a little confessional where he talks yep. about, right? He talks about how. He is someone that he thought wouldn't have a lot of chances to get rid of. He's someone that'll probably go for the shield as many times as he can. And this was a golden opportunity opening for him to, to get. So I don't think he's incorrect in doing that. Yeah. Um, I also think bananas is someone who no matter who says what about him, I think can be pretty charming and can wrangle people pretty well. Yeah. So, so I think there's a couple of different things that are going on here with uh, Johnny Bananas versus Dan. Uh, one, the way that Johnny Bananas gets taken out of this game is just so contrary to how life in the MTV challenge works. Uh, to my knowledge, there is almost like no way in the challenge. The whole point of the challenge is you can't just like have like a like quiet covert assassination of a big target like Johnny Bananas. You want to take out Johnny Bananas, you have to challenge him head on and you have to beat him in competition. That's yes. the that's the the world that he comes from. So to just be unceremoniously dispatched without Johnny Bananas being able to use like any sort of comeback against that that just does not compute for Johnny Bananas. But but two, and this is a little bit again, I am a little out of my element because so that, you know, I, I'm not Ali Lasher or Brian Cohen, and this is not my universe of talking about the challenge. However, so much of Johnny Bananas uh, outlook on the challenge has mm -hmm. come around this idea of vets versus fresh meat and rookies and know your place and if you don't necessarily like uh play by our rules the next time there is hell to pay uh, i think for johnny bananas i think that part of like what he needs to continue to do is if you cross me 
-hmm. I will never shake your hand and it will be all good. The next time Johnny Bananas goes on a show, he doesn't want whoever else is out there to ever forget that he is go. It is going to be your ass. You can. Okay, Dan, you can come for me and you can take me out on the traders, but I'm going to make an example out of you where the, the, to the next person, when I'm on what, you know, what, whatever the, the next time, I don't know what show he hasn't done yet. Um, <laughs> well, when he's out there, then, you know, when he's on celebrity, big brother, don't put him on the block because it's going to be not worth the trouble. I don't mind that explanation at all. I actually think it's very fun. And it also keeps him relevant. Yeah, keeps oh. his name out there. I mean, think of it this way. He went out episode one. We're on episode four, and there's still people talking about bananas. So he's put himself out there enough that people are actively talking about it. Um, it's unfortunate for him that it couldn't have been a more passive person, online passive person, to get rid of him in episode one. Because this Dan's paying zero mind to any of this from where I'm standing, I, which mm -hmm. I feel like for bananas, you want maximum fireworks. If Janelle was a trader and did this, then it's a whole different. Yeah, ball game. Dan won't give that oxygen. Um, mm, at it'll all. be it's an interesting like battle of wills uh, that will <laughs> who will break first? Uh, will will Dan ever respond or will Johnny Bananas run out of gas? My my money is on that. Johnny Bananas will run out of gas before Dan will ever respond. I mean, if this show is one episode a week and Dan is going to be there for like even four more weeks, that's a month from now that Bananas has to keep this energy, which trust me, he seems stubborn enough that he'd do it. But also I am not a, a you know, super Bananas know-it-all like a Brian Cohen would be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's keep an eye on all that. All right, let's get to some. Uh, all right, that was just the tip of the iceberg here. Okay. In terms in terms of uh, what's going on. All right. Um, let's let's talk a little bit. Uh, that um, um, Do we have anything here? So uh, let's see. We got some people sent in some. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. We don't need to explore the uh, Johnny Bananas uh, tweet thread. Um, <laughs> this was a pretty good one, I thought. Um, okay. So this was from today. Larsa. Uh, did an interview, and I believe she told, uh, was it Dalton Ross? Um, Entertainment Weekly had this tweet uh, where they posted an article from Dalton Ross that says, Larsa Pippen says Janelle was jealous of all her screen time on the traders. That's why she wanted to uh, go after her. And so, um, look, look, Larsa is bringing the real housewives to the traders. Yeah, I mean, listen, who said just because you're out of the show, you got to stop being part of the drama or the show? Because, yeah, she came out and said this. And then Janelle, I believe, did also respond yeah. for okay, it. So this was it. the Sorry. tweet. Entertainment Weekly says the Traders star Larsa Pippen says she was targeted because Janelle was upset that I was getting a lot of camera time and she wanted me off the show because I make good television and she doesn't, which is a little uh, audacious considering that they're not seeing the edited show. Uh, they're not like seeing like what they're, but I guess she felt like, okay, I'm being, I, I am being filmed so that that's the case. All right, and then Janelle ended up responding with this uh, that said, this can't be real. The only reason I came for Larsa was because she wouldn't shut her trap about who would want Ekin Sue dead and was continuously targeting me. Also, definitely not voting CT. I will say, and this is not a big brother bias here, I don't trust what Larsa is saying based on what I watched. I think more than one person wanted Larsa out. And I do not think it's the I make good television and she does an argument. I agree that Larsa did make some good TV. I also have watched Janelle make some good TV. But also some of the stuff Larsa was doing was not fun TV, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, each their own, Larsa. Yeah. But look, I think that this is a good kind of heat, you know, like I feel like that uh, Janelle can go uh, toe to toe with the housewives. I mean, uh, I think that Janelle likes this as much as the housewives like it.
Oh, for sure. I mean, this is the thing. I feel like uh, this is NBC. This is Bravo. This is not CBS. They can beef, and if the ones that are willing to beef, beef it back. You're drumming up some, some you know, look at all the engagements on these things. People are going to be very involved. People love it. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. So then... Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, a, a little bit uh, more of this stuff that's going on. Okay. How about uh, we got into it? Okay. How about oh, Ek and Sue and Janelle? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me see if I can bring up uh, this tweet and uh, take a look at. Okay. This is, oh, let's play a clip here, courtesy of Tamara's. Talking Traders podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, this is really this feedback show is going next level, Puya. It Here is. We we're go. checking out the competition, Rob. What's talking traders? Not saying? competition. We're all we're all here in the the uh traders sphere. Okay. All right. Here we go. Talking traders. Check out uh, check out Tamara's podcast, please. And then also like tell us when anything good happens. All right. So uh, here is from Talking Traders, Janelle explaining what uh, really happened between her and Ek and Sue. Let's talk You're about your shield. Yeah. because Yeah, because Ek and Sue said she had the shield. Peter and I were old working together, just like you. He's such a nice guy. And he was like, Janelle, do you want a shield? I was like, yeah. Ran over there and he starts knocking it on the whatever, the little shield symbol. And Ek and Sue comes behind me. And she's like, got her hand on my back. I'm like, girl, I was here way before you. Now she told um, me that you elbowed her really hit her hard. Bit her and hit yeah, her. Hit girl, I didn't touch you. She was like, oh my God, like I was there. I had it. And she hit me. And I'm like, oh my God, this Janelle is horrible. <laughs> I was thinking like, this is crazy. Janelle needs to go. Let's. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, nothing I didn't learn from watching the episode. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, look, that got that that got shared with us, Puya. It did. Um, welcome back, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, maybe maybe this one. Uh, All right. right. What about uh, okay. what about the Ekinsu rebuttal? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Ek and Sue on Johnny Bananas is talking traders over on the Death Taxes and Bananas podcast. Okay, all right. So, uh, well, let's weigh in on that. And he had Ek and Sue on the podcast, and they were talking about uh, a little bit about parvity. And a lot of people have been asking, what's going on with par? Why is parvity? Why is parvity? Uh, is she glaring? Is she squinting? Yeah, the, the squint heard around the world, Rob. This has become a whole phenomena here on the Trader Street, so much so that uh, it's been getting memed from week one and, and still going strong here. Okay, here's Ek and Sue with Johnny Bananas on death taxes and bananas. Can I try? Can I try and Please. do the facial? Yes. Yeah, yes. Please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to be squintier, though, like this. And then she does this lip twitch thing too. Like, yep, <laughs> nailed it. But I nailed said, it. that's the part. I, the, I, I said that's the part. Like, I said to Pavati, I was like, "Babes, um, are you doing this?" I said to, "It's not Ed, but I did say it to her. I was like, "Honey, I was like, um, are you acting? You know, I'm an actress, but I feel like you're doing this strange thing on your face, <laughs> and it's annoying me." <laughs> It looks like you're taking. It looks like she's cheating or taking a dump. It's like it really does at all times. It's like yeah, exactly. And I was like, and I was like, you're such a beautiful woman. Like, I do, you don't need to do that. Like, just be yourself. And she was like, no, I'm always like this. I was like, oh, okay, fair I, enough. I, like I said before, I didn't know who John was for like the first half of the first day. I thought he was like a production guy that kept sneaking on the set. I'm like. I'm like, is this guy just wandering? Did like, the clip changed midway. Just, yeah. just, I think they, they, they gave us a twofer there. On nice. This. A good, yeah. Love a good buy one get one. Okay. Yeah. Can I give my my theory on the? Of course, party please. Look, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, people get older. We need glasses. Okay. You think this is a glasses thing? Maybe. I mean, she didn't used to do that. 
I have two theories. That, that okay. theory number one, you know, maybe Parvati, like uh, when she's not on camera, has glasses. And then theory number two, well, yeah, us survivors are used to getting filmed outside. Yeah, with not the in these, sun like, out. all these bright lights. I, I see. I didn't catch on that this was gonna be a thing, but I don't think she's doing it like on purpose. Like I don't think this is a planned move. This is not an actress move, as mm. uh, Ekansu, number one actress, would say. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't mind it. I don't know. Do you? What do you think? It doesn't bother me. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I think we all have different ways we think of things. You know, some people will do a little squint. Some people will put a hand under the chin. Like, we, everyone does it a little different. Yeah. I don't know. I wish I, someone would mean me thinking all the time. I feel like that'd be fun. That you're noticing Do you feel me. like, is it uh, possibly, like, is poverty, like, trying to force, uh, like, she's a traitor, but she's trying to force, like, oh, I'm in pe deep, pensive thought. It's like when you get called on to continue reading the chapter in class and you were not paying attention. Mm, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if this was, a, this was something strange, I feel like Sandra would have said something by now. No? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, she's talk, Sandra will talk about what Larsa looks like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then uh, this was another one that people uh wanted us to talk about okay so back way back one in episode one when phaedra uh got asked about who do you think uh we should make a traitor she said she said was pushing for ct she said ct was uh i really i like him he would be good uh so here's a here's a uh clip that this was from uh watch what happens and Phaedra is talking about uh, her fondness for CT. Bravo, people is CT. CT from the challenge. You yeah. two. It was a love thing. Wow, I love it. <laughs> yeah, he was he was my castle daddy, but we just connected. <laughs> he was your castle daddy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Bravo, people is castle daddy. Listen, that's an accolade. Mm -hmm. It's an accolade. It's high praise. No one's calling me anything, Daddy. So here we are. No, come on, come on. What? What? Do you think they are? No, I, I'm sure. I'm okay. sure. It's for me to know, for you to find out, Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think Phaedra had made it Literally very clear. The nipple king. Uh, oh, that is a lost moniker in a mm -hmm. sea of monikers, Rob. I think that it was very clear from the beginning that Phaedra had taken a liking to CT. Which is why I thought it was ludicrous um, that Larsa wanted CT. I was like, Phaedra's not voting this man out. There's no shot this is happening. And CT is another one on the ballot, Rob, for playing a good faithful game. Because yeah, I, I think I think CT could be the winner. I, you know, I was saying mm -hmm. in the beginning of the show that I felt like that. Ooh, I feel like that CT and Trishel or could be like this pocket of the people that like know these games, but they don't have like the hot target on them like the people from Big Brother and Survivor. And I just, I do wonder, could they slip through? I could definitely see it. I could definitely see it. And I think the proof is in the pudding, just seeing their connections. Because CT has Phaedra. And mm -hmm. also, if he's part of this, if there is a gamers alliance and he's part of that, the two other traders are there. That's three traders are probably not going to want him out. I don't think Dan's going to want him out anytime soon because that's a target in front of him and he cannot afford to lose him now. And then on the other side of things, you've seen Sandra speak very fondly of him and want to work with yeah. him. And Sandra has Bergy. Like, Sandra, Sandra is going Sandra to bat for him. Are the best connected faithfuls at the moment from where I'm standing. Yep. Okay. Castle Daddy. Puya, anything else that you want to make sure we touch on here on our first Traders Feedback Show? Um, I'm very excited to see where this goes. I did feel like based on some of the que the questions I read through that I understand that some of you may be brand new to the traders. So if at any point you have any questions about like the format or the fundamentals of how the game works, feel free to message me or at me on Twitter. I will definitely respond because I want to make sure you have the full picture. Uh, one thing is I did see a couple people ask uh, questions about if there are these alliances, why are they not showing that to us in the edit? Why is this not being spoken about more? And there's one answer for that and one answer only. Traders is formatted to look and feel like a murder mystery game. 
And I feel like that would take away from the show. It becomes a survivor or a big brother when it's now alliances and a numbers game. They're never going to format it that way. And they're always going to favor the edit that makes it more who's a faithful, who do we think is a traitor, and so on. So, which is why I'm very curious to see if moving forward, we see these mentions of groupings and alliances again, because I still think that it was just for the Larsa vote. But we'll see. Okay. All right. Puya on, we've got Thursday night. Mm -hmm. We'll be back together to talk about this. Uh, Monday night on NBC, they're airing the Traders season two premiere episode at 10 p.m. So maybe that gets a little bit of a new blood checking out the Traders over on Peacock. And we will be together for episode number five, uh, coming to you live after the episode at 10, 15 p.m. Eastern on Thursday night. Exactly. I'm very excited, Rob. New group, the, the TV audience getting in on the traders. Can't wait to see what the hashtag looks like in a but a day. Let's okay. see how that goes. Now, Puya, this is not the only traders that you are covering. Uh, tell us about what's going on over on Traders UK. I mean, don't tell us the spoilers. Of course, I never would. Uh, it has been a, a wonderful season. I truly cannot keep praising the franchise enough. If you are looking for more traders content in between this one episode a week, wait. Definitely check it out. Myself and Edible got together today to talk about week three, episode seven, eight, nine. And uh, we gave our takes. We gave our predictions of what the end game could look like. So tune in and find out exactly what we thought. We had a lot of laughs along the way. And also while I'm talking about the traders, Rob, I do want to say if y'all could go ahead and give us some ratings and reviews for the feed. This is still a baby feed. We're not. We're about to hit the one year anniversary mm -hmm. of the feed. So feel free to go and do so over on Rob's website dot com yeah. slash traders. Okay. Leave them up. Great uh, point, Puya. Go to robitswebsite.com slash traders feed. Uh, we appreciate your feedback and your star ratings as uh, we're getting going here. Okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, if you don't, the traders win. Exactly. And and do you want that? I guess, no, actually, the traders will win and you want that because you like the traders right now. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, so be on the lookout for that. And then, of course, uh, make sure you subscribe to uh, join us on Thursday night. Make sure if you're watching us here on YouTube as well, uh, hit that subscribe button as uh, we will be uh, live after the episode and uh, hit that bell to be notified for when we go live then. All right, Puya, great job here tonight. Where can people keep up with you? They can find me on Twitter at Puya. You can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Puya. That's where I'm streaming when I'm not podcasting. I'm um, at Rob Sistrino. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.